In this free video, we're going to give you five must-follow steps for avoiding financial strain with your aging parent. Hi, I'm Carolyn, and this is my husband. Hi, I'm Dr. Micole. We're a nurse lawyer psychologist team with over 75 years of combined professional experience. Together, we founded AgingParents.com. And for years now, we have shown people just like you how to handle aging parent issues with love, dignity, and respect. If you're saving your money diligently for your later years, you're taking big risks if your plans don't include potential issues with your aging parents. It can be really hard to think that your parents are going to need your support but you really need to think about it and do some planning. The more you can look ahead and not wait until you're in a crisis, the better. And we really hope that you'll stop right now and take the time to think about this for a moment because your own life savings could be at stake. So in this free video, we're going to give you five steps that you can take right now to avoid financial strain with your aging parents. You know, there are an estimated 38 million Americans providing care to an aging parent. And the president's proposed budget for 2011 adds 103 million for programs that help elderly adults stay in their homes. However, it's probably financial support that you need most. Maybe you're like Dan. Dan is in his 50s. He's a bank executive from New Jersey, and his dad is 84. Dan thought his dad was doing all right money-wise. He was 84, lived alone in his own home, and was relatively healthy. Then one day, Dan's dad expressed concern that he might outlive his savings. Doctors said he might live another 12 years, and although he didn't want to be a financial burden, I don't think our aging parents ever want to be a burden, his dad needed help. Dad looked at his father's finances and saw they were loaded with high-risk investments, such as junk bond funds and things like that. So he turned to his financial advisor for help. Then Dad did, Dad, Dan rather, did something he realized should have been done earlier. He sat down with his two sisters for a, a family meeting, and they talked about what to do if their dad could no longer live on his own. He was able to get the family to all come to a mutual understanding of what could happen and what they would do if it did happen. Today, Dan's dad's finances are in better shape and Dan and his sisters are thoroughly prepared for the next crisis, whether that's medical or financial. Just imagine if Dan waited to have that conversation until after there was a stroke or something even worse. So don't wait any longer. You are not alone in this. So let us help you. Here are five steps you can take right now to avoid financial strain with your aging parent. Step one, get a mutual understanding with your aging parent. Don't wait for mom or dad to bring up the topic of what happens if they no longer can manage on their own. Often families are in denial about aging, preventing the conversation from taking place. Nicole and I both know very well it is not an easy thing to discuss, but it doesn't have to be impossible. Have an open and honest discussion before a crisis occurs. And if you have already experienced a crisis, have the discussion now before another crisis hits. So ask your aging parents these questions. Number one, have you thought about the future and what would happen if you couldn't be completely independent? Number two, how do you feel about your finances? And will you be able to support yourself if you need help taking care of yourself? Ensure them that if they do need help, you will help find it for them. Number three, do you have money set aside to pay for home care or assistance with daily living? Number four, what are the circumstances under which it would be appropriate for me to help manage your finances? Now, step two is to get a mutual understanding with your siblings. You need to talk with your siblings about what 
you may be facing in a few years. Here's some questions that you need to ask. One question is, is anyone going to quit work to care for ailing parents or to take them in? Two, is assisted living a good choice for all concerned? Three, is everyone prepared to chip in for a home care worker if necessary? Four, how can the caregiving be made fair? If one sibling's going to live with an aging parent as the primary caregiver, everyone needs to agree on a monetary value for that and what that person will receive. An account can be set up where all contribute a certain amount per month. And an elder law attorney or our office can draw up caregiver contracts. Keep in mind that everyone may not agree on all issues or be able to contribute equally, and that's really okay. But the earlier you confer, the better. Our friend Dan found this step challenging because his sisters were each in very different financial situations. And in the end, the consensus was that they would take turns with caregiving duties at their father's home. Talking to your siblings may feel uncomfortable at first, but believe it or not, now is the time when it's the easiest to do this, before things get emotionally charged and you and your siblings are less able to think clearly with a cool head. So the time is really now. And then there's step three. You want to assess your parents' financial condition. Get familiar with your parents' financial health. Make sure you know these five things. The sources of their income. This could be pension, social security, a retirement, or other account, but you have to know where the money's coming from. Next, the balances in their accounts. You may know they're getting it, but you don't know what's in it, so you need to find that out. Consider having them also put your name on the accounts, as it may be necessary in a crisis. Next, does your aging parent have other means available, such as home equity, to raise cash in a pinch in order to stay in their home or pay bills? And last, do their investments need to be reallocated to make their level of risk more age appropriate? And for this, you want to seek out a professional, reputable financial advisor to help resolve these issues. And step four is to get a grip on costs. You need to know what Medicare covers and the costs of what it doesn't. It may surprise you or even shock you to learn what it does not cover. For example, in-home care, uh, among many other uh, expenses, costs can add up really fast. Here are the average costs based on 2008 data from the Department of Health and Human Services. $29 an hour for a home health aid. Wow. $59 a day for care in an adult daycare center. $18 an hour for a home maker services and over $3,008 a month for a one-bedroom unit and an assisted living facility. And in fact, here in California, that's quite low, $3,000. We're looking at much larger numbers right now for people to stay in assisted living facilities. Having your parents move in with one of the children or anyone pitching in for in-home assistance can really help these costs from derailing everyone's retirement plans. All right, and step five is that you want to assume longevity. That means living a long time. Our parents did planning for us, now it's our turn to do planning for them. You wanna make financial and other plans with the assumption that older parents will live to a ripe old age. And be sure a financial advisor structures their investment portfolios accordingly. We recommend calculating life expectancy at 100 years. Here is a helpful statistic to keep in mind. 
A 70-year-old has a 47% chance of living to 85 and a 3% chance of reaching 100. Assuming long lives may also mean fixing up your aging parents' house so they can comfortably remain there longer, which could ultimately ease your financial burden too. Things like stairway lifts, widened doorways, walk-in tubs, and other modifications to accommodate people with physical disabilities are tax deductible. Check with a tax expert regarding other home improvements. If they're not too old or infirm to qualify at affordable rates, make sure they have long-term care insurance. Very important. Buying a policy on their behalf may help protect your retirement funds in the long run. Most important of all, don't put off preparing for this. Do it right and do it now. And remember, you are not alone. We are always here to help. So that's it for our five must-follow steps on how to avoid financial strain with your aging parent. How can you find out more? Well, if you want to make handling your aging parent's finances easier, you can. And we can show you just how to do that. If you've noticed lately an increasing number of red flags telling you that your aging parent is becoming less independent, or your mom or dad are missing important payments or just losing track of their money, then you need to take action now before someone else takes legal responsibility over their finances. Go to agingparents.com money and read about our guide, How to Handle Money for Aging Loved Ones. It's an easy to follow step-by-step -step action plan that will make the entire process simple, clear, and straightforward enough for anyone to understand. You can find out more by going to agingparents.com money. So we hope that you've enjoyed this video of our five must follow tips for avoiding financial strain with your aging parents. We've certainly enjoyed making it for you. Have a great day and we look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks for watching Help with Financial Strains Regarding Aging Parents. If you need more help with financial strains, feel free to visit our website at agingparents.com. To watch more helpful videos, click here to subscribe or watch another video. Also, check us out on Facebook or on Twitter. Thanks again for watching.